The intrusion as far north as Chaco seems to me to be a matter largely of trade. Uh, there are lots of things up there. There's, there, there's copper, which clearly came from Mesoamerica. There, is, uh, uh, there are macaws. Macaw is the uh, brightly plumaged parrot-like bird. Uh, there, there is something called Pseudopoisonae, which is found all over Mesoamerica. Uh, there's seashell, lots of seashell. Uh, more recently, within the last few years, has been discovered remnants of cacao, chocolate, in uh, vessels in one of these big Chaco sites, uh, 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 Bonito, that, um, and vessels that themselves seem to be copies of one that came from probably the Mixteca area down in here. Well, there's also architectural features. Columned uh, fronted gallery at a site called Chetrakatl. Platform mounds. Stone core masonry. Very elaborate masonry. Have any of you been to Chaco Canyon? No? Oh, well, lots of you. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Um, maybe the road system itself. Uh, ro uh, roads are very big in Mesoamerica. Um, but uh, seemingly no evidence of religion or art or I think maybe a political or social organization. That I think uh, is maybe homegrown. I I'm not sure of this, but I think so. The, uh, now in Membris, you had the same kind of thing happen. You have a thriving society. Not several thousand people, maybe several, uh, 15, 10 or 15,000. And you had uh, irrigation agriculture, large towns, a masonry, a masonry um, architecture. Uh, but you also had what seemed to be a series of new religious, uh, religious um, elements and particularly, you had the god Quetzalcoatl in his epiphany as a divine uh, twins. I, the ne next couple of slides will give you some idea. That there is, these are the divine twins, and I forget what they're doing. This is, uh, I don't know, either earth monster or water monster, and they're either escaping from it or attacking it, and I've, I've actually kind of forgotten. But uh, they, uh, these... These divine twins are known all through Mesoamerica. Uh, this is from, these are this is from members. Let, let's see the next one. Uh, they're in all. This is a, a kind of an odd epiphany. Uh, they're shown as male and female. Now, almost always are male. But once in a while, they will be shown as male and female. Okay, these these are clearly Mesoamerican things. Uh, there is also some horned or uh, plume serpents in memories, but they're relatively rare. I don't have any slides of them, but at any rate, uh, the, these, the twins were very clearly there. Now, both um, Chaco and Memories collapsed about the same time, about 11, 1130, 1150, something like that. Uh, let's go to the, another map now. This is a map uh, which I made for the Atslan book, and it is what I conceive to be Atslan. And uh, Atslan in the period about 12 to 1500, but, but expanding into this region during that time. Beginning about 1200, there came a more definitive wave of Mesoamerican influence which impacted Casas Grandes, or Casas Grandes up about here. And um, uh, about 100 years later, it spread to the uh, Sonoran area, and it spread into the upper portion, portion, the American portion of the Southwest. 
Now, remember we said earlier that in the Casas Grandes area, there had been several hundred years of a rather slow evolution of a mogollon-like culture, which uh, the peso, the excavator of Casas Grandes, had called the Viejo period, the old period, in, uh, uh, in that area. Around AD 1200, or maybe slightly later than that, there was a rather sudden quickening. How sudden? Uh, it seems to me quite sudden, but some people say, no, it wasn't quite all that sudden. Anyway, a fairly sudden quickening in the Casas Grandes area, causing the building of Mesoamerican-like structures in large compact towns, Casas Grandes or Paqui as it's alternatively called, only one of several. Uh, large towns uh, with such features as the Mesoamerican type I or T shaped ball court, something that extends all the way down into Maya country, metallurgy, advanced polychrome pottery, though again, no writing systems. Uh, I have some slides of that that might illustrate. Uh, this is a I shaped ball court. You can see why it's called an I shaped ball court. This is one at Casas Grandes. Uh, it is very similar to one you find, uh, although much smaller, than one uh, very famous one you find at Chichen Itza, uh, way down in Yucatan, in the Maya country. And you find these ball currents, you find them in, uh, in the region of uh, uh, La Camada. Uh, Kelly thinks he found one at Alta Vista. Uh, they're all over the place. This is a Mesoamerican type ball court. And... Uh, uh, a ritual ball game of somewhere, some type was played here, and sacrifices, rather gruesome uh, human sacrifices, was made in conjunction, apparently, with the ball, ball game. Now, um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is Casas Grandes. The, um, a lot of it is unexcavated, but you can see from the excavated part, there are temple mounds, uh, there, are, there is this curious mound here called the Mound of uh, the Cross, for obvious reasons. The big thing, these, uh, uh, the whole thing run, maybe runs, oh, at least 100 feet uh, north, south, and east, west. It's oriented to the cardinal directions, and uh, the peso has reason to believe it was used in equinox ceremonies. Okay, another slide. This is the uh, signature pottery of Casas Grandes called Ramos Polychrome. And it has the very important bird, the macaw, on, on that particular one. I think there may be a servant on the back. I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyway, that's a fairly classic example. And there also was, uh, yeah, another slide. There also were figurines of various kinds, male, the nude figurine, male and female, this one. Is male. Uh, the, uh, they're decorated. Um, Polly Shafsma thinks that some of them may have been masked. Uh, the uh, other, other uh, uh, Casas Grandes archaeologists think, no, that isn't the case. But uh, uh, Chris uh, Van Poole, who's really quite an expert on the religion of Casas Grandes, thinks they are shaman figures, and uh, part of a shaman-based priesthood. 